have you had enough caffeine? Because it's a Python conference, and uh, I'm going to give a talk on intellectual property law. And in front of a room full of developers, um, it, it is a dream for me, but I think it's mostly a nightmare for many of you. But I captured you, so I'm going to blabber for the next 29 minutes. And you have to bear with me. But before I start, as I always do, let me tell you a story. So it was 2012, my first PyCon, PyCon India. I was actually uh, went there to support my dear husband. I was a lawyer, a mortgage attorney, a serious one <laughs> back then. And I didn't have any connection with technology whatsoever. Now I went, and uh, as a lawyer, I'm used to going to this very posh conferences, you know, uh, where people are dressed in their best suit. And I'm used to this uh, cheese and wine parties where even if you can't stand someone, then also we say, I beg to differ, and very politely. And here, I am in the, at this conference where people are having disagreement and they're shouting and they're fighting and they're laughing while they are working on a code. Oh my God, it was an apocalypse for me. Now, and people were actually wearing their torn jeans and some old conference t-shirt and showing it as badge of honor. I didn't understand that. Now, in that conference, whenever I was giving this... Um, uh, my introduction as I, I'm a hey I'm a lawyer people were like oh my god uh, okay she's a lawyer be scared either they were like very scared of me or they were just not including me in the conversation now I could realize at that point of time that I don't belong there and the, for for the last eight years I'm trying very hard to belong here I understand, and why didn't why did I wanted to belong? Because I understand that I understood back then that law and technology these are two very important forces, which is going to build our future. So, I thought of creating a bridge. So here we are at PyCon at a PyCon, at EuroPython, and we, are we will be trying to build that bridge. Because we are in an era of technology where these very two strong forces need to work in a synergy to create a better future. Law needs to get amended to suit the technology, and technology needs to follow the rule of law, whether you like it or not. This is our future. So now I had, um, as my talk, if you go outside, you'll see that my talk is Intellectual Property Law 101. But when I showed the slide, it was Intellectual Property 101. I actually not included law, not to scare you in the talk, so that you don't run away from the talk. <laughs> so but I had this word, right, Intellectual Property. So what is intellectual property? Let us understand it. But before that, a little bit introduction of this storyteller. Hi, I'm Anvesha. I'm a lawyer by education and technologist by passion. I work at Red Hat in the Ansible community engineering team as a software engineer. I am a Python Software Foundation fellow I help co communities, free and open source uh, communities around the globe with my technical, legal, and organizational skills. And I'm a proud, proud Pi Lady. I have led Pi Lady's efforts in India, and then now I am an organizer at Pi Lady Stockholm. I maintain my blog at anveshadas.in. And definitely, after my intro, I, I have no liberty to say, that I am not a lawyer, because I am a lawyer, but not your lawyer. Therefore, this talk should not be considered as a legal advice. <laughs> now, there was a, a heavy, vague uh, term 
English phrase which we were talking about, intellectual property, remember? So what is this intellectual property? Intellectual property, as very much evident from the definition itself, that it protects the invention created by intellect through some codified law. Now, these are the uh, assets created by human intellect, human mind. Now, wait. We are protecting something like human mind, which you cannot see or touch. Like then how come we are doing it? Here comes the twist. Law protects both the things which you can touch and which you cannot touch, which has a physical presence and which does not have a physical presence. Um, so land, property, um, uh, then apartments, bungalows, which most of us developers don't have, are tangible property. And intellectual property falls under the category of intangible property. Now, why does law intend to protect intellectual property? Why do we have this genre of law? Because through protecting intellectual property, law is uh, trying to encourage the, and develop and foster the environment of creativity and innovation. Now, there are different types of intellectual property. We are going to discuss all of, like, we are not going to discuss all of them, but we will go through. The first one is patents. Then copyright, trademarks, trade secrets, industrial design, and geographical indications. Now for our talk today, we are only going to cover first three of them, patents, copyright, and trademark. Now the, the first one in the list which we are going to discuss is trademark. And I can see Mark in front of me. Can you think how scared I am to give a talk on trademark in front of Mark? So. Okay, nobody could get the joke, but you will <laughs> able to get it. At least I could see Mark uh, and uh, Carol and Naomi smiling. So, okay, S three people did. <laughs> so, what is trademark? Trademark is a type of intellectual property consisting of recognizable sign, design, or expression that identifies a product or service from a uh, like uh, distinguish, uh, distinguishes a product or service from a particular source and distinguishes it from others as well. Like identifies it and distinguishes it. And that was legalese. Now, let us figure out what trademark is in a human language. A trademark is a sign that is capable of distinguishing goods and services of one enterprise from another enterprise. So it is easier for us to distinguish whether this, who is the maker of this laptop uh, from the trademark, which is written somewhere here. This is not my laptop, so I can't see. Uh, there are the stickers, yes. And these are not my stickers also. So uh, this is Pi Ladies. So we know what Pi Ladies is. You won't think it's a soft drink company, or this is, this is, a beautiful woman, but uh, she is not posing for something else but for code. Now, uh, to declare trademark, there are a few symbols uh, which is associated with it. We are going to discuss about it, but a little later. I just showed you two trademark, uh, two individual stickers, one Pi Ladies and two Pi Ladies, both the Pi Ladies ones. Now, so who owns those? PSF, Python Software Foundation, owns uh, uh, these trademarks and those logos. Now, uh, we were talking about uh, like, uh, we were talking about certain symbols and who protects them. Uh, so, do you know, or how many of you know? And Mark does not get to answer this. Uh, <laughs> that uh, PSF runs a trademark committee. Okay. Yes, that is why people were not getting the joke. Uh, there's a, there's a trademark committee uh, which is run uh, by, there are four of us, Mark, David, Iqbal, and me. 
but and this is one of the most active committee i would say uh, the average response time in that in the committee is if you mail them it's uh, um, almost 40 minutes so it's 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 40 minutes and there are many a times when i think that i'm going to reply and i type something and then i come uh, from the washroom uh, from a bio break and I see that's done because it's so fast and we are really, really active. It's all because of Mark and David and thank you for doing it so relentlessly for such a long time. Actually, I would like to thank you uh, uh, for the, all the work and answering the same questions again and again. Now, what does this uh, PSF Trademark Committee do? The PSF Trademark Committee aims to protect the consumers rather than the trademark owner. So the PSF trademark committee is for all of us. It's not for the PSF. Uh, so who are the consumers of Python? We are the consumers of Python, the community, the developers, the users. We are the com uh, consumers. Therefore, the trademark committee is there to help us and also to protect certain policies which uh, is there so that our community is not confused. Our, um, our trademarks are not being misused. Now, as I said, as I said, and I was talking about PSF's trademark committee without changing the slide, great. Uh, so as, as I was saying that PSF tra in, uh, in PSF's trademark committee, uh, that if you have questions relating to logos, if you have questions relating to any uh, anything related to trademark, please go and find this wonderful FAQ page. Go there, read it. If it is not answered, then only. And I, I really urge, because I, I always see that there are same questions which is already answered in the FAQ are being ans uh, asked in the trademark committee. So. And then you can go and ask the, uh, these legal experts. So now uh, the, uh, that reminds me, the Python Software Foundation vote is uh, for the board is going on. Ple if you haven't casted your vote, please consider casting it. It helps our community to grow and sustain. Now we were talking about certain symbols, right? Uh, we were talking about certain symbols. So if we go back, and check it over here that uh, we can see that uh, if you can see that there is the, the small TM over there. So that is, uh, so there are various signs which says that this trademark, whether this trademark is registered or not. If you can see uh, that there is one R uh, in the round sign, uh, then that is, uh, that is registered under US patent office. U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Now, if you see TM, this is uh, this declares a trademark, but it is not registered as yet. The C, um, so and the SM, uh, which is service mark, uh, which is not reg like which stands for the service. Now, uh, for Europe, you can apply for trademark. Uh, in like different countries, different country has different jurisdiction, and they have separate trademark office. You can go and apply for your trademark over the over there. Now, if we want to summar, uh, if we want to summarize the whole conversation, uh, there is one very important thing which we need to remember. I just showed you uh, that this is mark, which is uh, uh, th uh, this is um, like these are the trademarks, and you have to remember this uh, symbols. But this is not um, this is not universal. This is very ter territorial and jurisdictional. What is law in U.S. and what is law in Europe and many other countries in Europe are not similar or same. So, if we want to summarize the whole conversation, patent is some pay, we grant a trademark to understand that how are my product is different from someone else's, right? And what is patent? The next stop is patent because patent actually is granted over the idea, uh, but not over, so trademark is there to support uh, uh, the, uh, the source and patent is there to support 
or uh, to support and protect the idea. Now, what is patent? The word patent is originated from the word letters patent. As opposed to the closed letter, these were letters signed and sealed by King of Im England. By and through these open letters, the King of England used to give certain rights to its subjects. Now, uh, uh, so here are the letters from which the subject used to get certain rights. If you think it uh, in the same way, patent gives certain rights to certain people. Now, who are these people and what is the definition of patent? The definition of patent says, patent is an exclusive monopoly right over the idea. The right which is granted to the innovator by the sovereign the, or, uh, uh, or the any other authority for a limited period of time. Now here are four things which we need to discuss. The first one being idea. Patent is granted over the idea, uh, I, uh, uh, idea of the invention. So when, uh, if you're thinking about curl, thinking, think like this way, that patent protects the idea behind curl, that is the transferring data over internet, not the code base itself. For an idea that, uh, for an idea to be patented or patentable, the idea needs to be novel and new. The next one is mono the next one is monopoly. Patent is an exclusive right to of the inventor unless there is some other agreement. Uh, agree there are some other agreement with some uh, other uh, uh, some other party. Patent is a monopoly right of the uh, inventor. Now, the next one is sovereign. So sovereign means the authority in here. When we are talking about uh, authority, it means that there are few uh, government bodies. Generally, sovereign is the government who makes the laws. Now, there are certain gov government bodies from, with, uh, from where you can apply for, trade, uh, uh, for the patent. Now, in this case, uh, like, uh, in Europe, it's the EU, EU Commission has a patent office. Also, every country has a patent office itself. Uh, so, and for US, it is the uh, US Patent and Trademark Office which issues the patent. And the last one, the, la uh, the last one, the last one being uh, uh, the last one is a limited period uh, that is uh, grant uh, is the limited period that is granted uh, for a limited period of time. Like the patent is not uh, is not for eternity. It is a time bound thing. It is a uh, it is a time bound thing, and it is different from the trademark. So the I and why this is time bound and why trademark is not time bound because trademark was what was trademark doing? Trademark was protecting the source. The source will be same, but the idea should be used by other people uh, once it is uh, once that time is over. So uh, so now someone showed me that I have only ten minutes left. I have to be very fast. Now, uh, here are so, so patent has certain risks. Uh, so open in, uh, so patent has some certain risk, legal risk, it is time consuming, you have to pay for it. So there is a uh, network of, uh, there's, an, uh, uh, there's a network and there's an organization which we need to take note. It's called Open uh, Invention Network. Is an, it is an organization of different multinational, org uh, different multinational organizations companies and patent owners, this is um, where they are coming together under one roof to safeguard open source from patent risk. And Open Invention Network is the largest patent non-aggression community. And here I'm very, very proud that my employer, Red Hat, is a part of OIN, Open Invention Network. Now, patent protects the idea 
and the invent and the invention of the uh, uh, um, and and the invention itself and the new uh, and the new process is protected by copyright so what is copyright if we flip the word copyright it is it comes as the right over a copy or right to copy here's the definition of copyright goes like this copyright is an exclusive right to distribute sell the original creation granted for a limited period of time again uh, we remember for, from patent by again the sovereign the government has the power to uh, issue the copyright now you do not need to apply for copyright then if you do not like uh, as we were discussing trademark and patent we actually had to go and apply for uh, trademark and patent now if we want to uh, now if we don't have to apply for copyright then how come we are getting copyright we are getting copyright through software licenses software licenses this is a very very familiar term now software licenses is the declaration uh, rather than uh, you can say it's a declaration rather than agreement which a developer is going to have or intends to have with its user now when you are attaching a software license to your code base to your project you are act what you are doing you are actually saying you can do these many five things with my project and you cannot do these many 10 things with my project and if you want to use it you have to abide by these rules now there are uh, there are many times uh, when we think how come software is copyrighted because we generally think the literary work the art, uh, the paintings and uh, uh, the artistic work those are protected by copyright but how come this intellectual property is coming and bothering us uh, the law, uh, the coders the developers when you develop something it's an idea you're developing which is patentable now uh, the next uh, and you are writing a code how you write is your choice is your expression the language you choose is your choice and your expression this particular two things choice and expression makes you us code poet isn't it cool <laughs> now we need to discuss about what are the different types of copyright uh, uh, and if uh, sorry different types of software licenses now uh, if if for the um, for the uh, so that the discussion becomes a little easy we need to divide the discussion into the, we need to divide all the software licenses uh, the in the way they uh, they for in the following category like uh, how much right they are giving to the user and how much uh, it is retaining to for the developer or the people who are holding the copyright now the first one is the proprietary licenses proprietary licenses is the most restrictive ones it gives very specific restrictive rights to the users now um, how can uh, how we abide by uh, like how we sign the contract of this pro pro for this pro proprietary license we sign uh, a contract called eula and users license agreement and how do we do it we can uh, do it uh, by clicking on gui or uh, we can just obtain it and, um, and uh, get it from there and also it's for a limited period of time many of the gaming software which has eula just by opening the box you are uh, abiding you are agreeing to abide by those rules of eula so and that is called shrink wrap lap li wrap licensing oh, okay uh, the, uh, the other if one do, uh, one perspective is cop uh, uh, proprietary license the other one is public domain and the public domain as the names uh, suggested when the um, it is in the you uh, it is in the domain of public it is in the area of public it is safe for the public to use um, how can some some work can be on public domain you can uh, exp uh, you can very specifically mention that it is under public domain you um, uh, declare it or the copyright has been expired after 20 uh, years we were discussing 
20, after 20 years of time, when the copyright is expired, it, is, it comes under public domain. And also copyright, uh, copyright is different. The time limitation for copyright is different from uh, one country to another. And even, uh, even if, uh, 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 like if there, are, there are places where you cannot uh, apply for, uh, like uh, uh, submit something in public domain directly, then you can actually opt for Creative Commons Zero or opt for unlicensed.org. And here comes our way, the open source way. Though, um, because my I run a Linux uh, laptop, uh, it was not possible to connect it. But our way is open source way, and we are in an open source conference. So, among the uh, uh, so, what is open source? Open source is a de uh, open source uh, is um, is in the middle. So if you see there is public domain and there is prop proprietary licenses, open source is somewhere in the middle. So and the definition of open source is uh, maintained by Open Source Initiative, OSI. Among many other 10 promises, what open source licenses give is the free distribution, open source code, and make your own derivative uh, for making your own derivative work are some significant ones. There, um, so let's let's divide the open source licenses, and I'm going to just touch base it. If you want to listen to the talk in a detailed way, please grab me in the hallway uh, because I have exhausted all the time. Uh, pr the permissive uh, the permissive licenses, per as the name suggests, these are highly permissive licenses. And what are the and these gives very many rights. What are the examples of perm permissive licenses? MIT and BSD. MIT, we all, because it is m much similar to another variant of op um, another open source license, which is XPAC license, so many people uh, like refer, may refer MIT as XPAC license, but um, so th these are all uh, highly permissive, highly permissive licenses. The next one, which is lesser permissive license, and uh, that is Apache. Apache has a patent grant clause. Now, I think you will be able to connect the patent grant uh, clause and uh, li like how they are uh, interrelated. Then there is a reciprocal license. The, uh, what is a, a reciprocal license? Is a license where you have some duties in reciprocity. You have to do certain uh, things. The example of reciprocal license is a GNU general public license. It is an example of copyleft license and best practices. Uh, so when you're choosing a license, you're actually choosing your community so, uh, and your use case. So choose a license for your use case. Do not go and say that I follow this, so I am choosing it. I, I, I'm an ardent follower of MIT, so I will choose MIT for every project. No, choose a license which are uh, based on your use case. And most importantly, do not invent your own <laughs> license. This is very, very important. There was a license which says, buy me a, uh, if you want to use this code, buy me a beer. So that doesn't happen. I don't know where uh, that person is to buy a beer. And how costly is the beer over there? If it is Norway, then I'm doomed. Uh, <laughs> so to continue this conversation, Carolina is giving a talk uh, towards standards, uh, towards licensing standardization in Python packaging. Now, uh, I really urge you to go there because it might think you might think that this this uh, this topic intellectual property is not important. It is important and it is it has serious issues. It is creating serious problem. Please go and attend Carolina's talk. And here I am ending my con uh, talk. If you want to uh, uh, listen to licensing. Please come to me and fetch me and grab me in the hallways. Um, I know, Mahe, I'll just take one minute um, because I want to share something very spe um, very close to my heart today. Um, I'm, I I'm battling mental health issues. I'm suffering from anxiety and depression. I have a bowl full of ice here to just to remind me that I'm not dead or I will not be dead. Uh, it, it is to give me shock. And if you are facing it, it, it actually took me a lot of courage to stand here and give this talk. And if you are facing it, you're not alone. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Anvesha, for a great talk. I specifically liked how you explained the difference between copyright, trademark, and patent. I did not know that before this talk. And also, uh, thank you for a great ending note. Um, if there are any questions, uh, you can, as she said, you can grab her in the hallway and ask those questions because we don't have time for questions. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for Dvesha, please.